Now, body of knowledge is actually is about what they expect you to know, okay? So as we say, the very first thing um, this body of knowledge says is that you must have a broad knowledge relating to maintenance, inspection, repair, and alteration of pressure vessel, okay? So this is designed to determine if individuals have such, such knowledge, okay? So that's pretty straightforward. Now, how to get that knowledge? Um, I will, uh, I'm just going through the API and then I tell you in a very simple language uh, what you should be your study plan, okay? Uh, so if you come to here, you see that they have put the reference documentation without any revision number. Remember the revision number, the correct revision number that you should study, you can find in publication effectively. Here, just a list without the revision number. And you, so you should know about thickness measurement, inspection interval, uh, remaining life, corrosion rate, remaining corrosion allowance. And they will also given you all these paras. So you have to study this para 7174 E. You know, whatever is here, you should study it doubly more than other areas. Obviously, they have not covered all the section by section where, where it comes from, but they are giving you an idea. So here you should know about uh, corrosion rate, remaining corrosion allowance, remaining service life, and then we use inspection interval, which is always half of the remaining service life. But there are some terms condition you will see. Uh, you should know about the joint efficiency, and it, they're also giving you where this is coming from, UW3, 11, 12, etc. So the joint efficiency is that uh, practically, um, I mean, a well joint, whether you NDT it or do not NDT it, it remains the same. It's just increase our confidence when you NDT it. So if you do like 100% radiography, and it's uh, by that, you can demonstrate that it's defect free. So your confidence goes up. There is nothing happening to the world. So your confidence when it goes up as a designer or as a inspector, uh, you put a joint efficiency of one. And the, the less you do the NDT, your confidence level from that joint, it might or might, might not have, you cannot take risk. So you have to re reduce the joint efficiency when you don't do any NDT, for example, to 0.7. If you do 10%, then it's 0.85 uh, of the joint you can use, joint strength. Um, you should, and the aesthetic head, they brought like, when you do a pressure test, if it's a long, big pressure vessel, you've got like, um, say, um, four meters of, five meters, six meters long pressure vessel, and it's vertical, say, for example, uh, then you have some level of water there, and that water also adds to the pressure. So the pressure at the top is not uh, same as pressure at the bottom of the vessel. And for each feet of the height, you got 0.433 PSI. So roughly every two, two and a half feet, you got one bar or one uh, PSI in uh, pound per square inch uh, increase in pressure at the bottom. So you should be you should know about this. The internal pressure, this one UG27 on ASME section eight is very important for internal pressure because the 510, 572, all these came from the ASME section eight. And you should know about the heads, different heads. And uh, external pressure is just UG28, you don't need to uh, perform any calculation, but you should know what is this. This is actually, say, a pressure vessel, which is, uh, the pressure is not inside, but it's from outside, like a vessel which is, uh, uh, say, under the sea, okay? You should know about pressure testing, which is actually, again, basically coming from ASME Section 8, UG 99 and 100. And you should know about impact testing because the metal uh, behavior changes depending on the ambient temperature or the temperature, the inside temperature of that. So the cooler it becomes, the more brittle it becomes. You can see that some pressure vessel, even, you know, just fabricated and pressure tested, they have been uh, failed during pressure tests because the ambient or atmospheric temperature or the temperature of the fluid was too low. 
and the pressure was too high. Uh, normally the pressure test is 1.3 times. Um, most of the time they do one and a half times of operating pressure. They do the test pressure just to make doubly sure it can be to stand the operating pressure. Um, so you should know about impact testing. Uh, uh, so practically impact testing is reducing the temperature say to minus 20 degrees centigrade and then uh, do a impact test and see uh, uh, how much energy it absorbed uh, during uh, that temperature. Uh, and so that would be, uh, say, would be, say, my 27 Joule at minus 20 C. Uh, belt size attachment openings, uh, nozzle reinforcement, this you do not need. And they also tell you what you did not need to know. Okay, so all these are calculation and uh, from engineering point of view, and you're not supposed to see that, to, to know that. You should know, be able to uh, look at the WPS, building procedure certification, and know the essential, non-essential parameter, the uh, qualifying record, a procedure qualification record, the welder procedure qualification. Uh, you should, you, you're not supposed to be a welding inspector, but you should know as an API inspector, what you should see in a uh, WPS or what you should see in a welder's ticket. And the procedure covered are just very few. So it's not all the welding uh, processes. It's uh, uh, shielded metal arc welding, gas tungsten, gas metal, and submerged arc welding. And the WPS that they give you, it would be just one process. There wouldn't be a mixture of this because in reality, you see a gas tungsten arc welding with a, say, Sub, submerged arc welding, okay, um, in WPSs. But here you will see only one process they would bring. You should know about P number, F number, A number, what this means, and uh, the general welding requirements. Now, typical joints definitions, and uh, this is because um, the joints um, category depends on the location, not on the profile of the joint. So if you study 577, you will see that, or ASME section. And about non-destructive examination, you should know about the general requirements, okay? And also some of the most popular methods, like radiography, um, liquid penetrant, or PMI, or PT test, uh, magnetic particle, um, ultrasonic, and all these NDT methods, you don't need to be again an NDT inspect examiner, okay, qualified examiner. But as a part of your job, you are supposed to look at the uh, the NDT that has been done, and then based on that, do do your inspection interval or do uh, give your recommendation and uh, uh, determine the remaining life, etc., and the corrosion rate, the annual corrosion rate. But for that, you need to understand what a NDT report looks like, what you should see there, what should be observed there. Um, say, for example, uh, on a penetrant test, you should know how the procedure should look like, what are the contaminants, the techniques in PT, the examination methods, uh, how you interpret, how the interpretation is done, and documentation and record keeping. Remember, API actually approves the uh, and tells the ND examiner what to do, which what to inspect, and uh, uh, approves their NDT report. Although they are not authorized like um, NDT examiner, but they have the power to do that, and they are actually leading the team. So you need to know about all this uh, lamination, thickness measurement, and uh, they also ask you here about you know, some practical knowledge that you should have. Okay. We try to bring lots of uh, uh, case example here. So if you come to our uh, website, we also have a link, uh, LinkedIn. You can follow us, a YouTube that you can see our videos. And some of these videos are free. 